Well, it's Monday the 4th of January and unfortunately my eye hasn't got any better so I've had a shower. I'm just going to have my breakfast now and then I'm off to hospital. Um, I'm going to ring them first to see whether I need to report to A&E or go straight to the eye department. Um, I know at minimal it's going to be laser treatment. At the most it'll be an operation called a vitrectomy, uh, which obviously won't be happening today. Uh, but that's the worst case scenario. I hope that they uh, get the table the right way and they can spell. I don't want a vasectomy. Um, no, but I've had a vit vitrectomy before on my left eye and affected my eye quite a lot. It closed my eye after the operation. But it, uh, the vitrectomy involves taking the vitreous gel from inside your eyeball. They take that out and replace it with highly compressed gas. Your gas, when it's compressed, turns to liquid. So that fills your eyeball full of liquid and gets the blood out. It basically flushes your eyeball. They also have to give laser then uh, during the operation to cortisone where the uh, bleed is coming from at the back of the eyeball. And then over a, roughly a six week period, the uh, liquid disperses and goes down. And it's funny, you, have, you can see like you're underwater and you have like a, a built in spirit level in your eye. But I know last time it took six weeks and it's very tricky when you've only got this other eye, which isn't very good anyway. So I could have a rough trot ahead of me. I'm just hoping that a bit of laser, a bit of rest, and it'll settle. Right. Brecky, then hospital. It's a beautiful, crisp morning this morning. The sun's out and it's cold. It's lovely. I don't mind like this. As long as it's dry. I don't mind the cold, really. It's lovely. Um, the sun isn't very good with my <laughs> milky eye, but it uh, doesn't matter. My main concern today is the boys, to be honest. They're my main worry. I don't want Dale fretting. Chip will be fine, providing he's got his food bowl. He's happy and his bed. But Dale frets when, he's, uh, when his dad's not there, so I'm hoping he'll be okay. And I hope they don't keep me there too long. Yeah, Ian has very kindly offered to look after the boys on Morning Star. So I'll take their bed and their food and everything. So uh, they'll have familiar things around them. And I know they'll be warm and well looked after. So thank you, Ian, very, very much. It's so awkward when uh, you haven't got a car in the family, isn't it? In a, a previous vlog, I was walking down here and just in front of me was a lady's head in the clouds and it got spotted by several viewers. Uh, take a look. Takes it away, it would be nice to be raising the glass with someone special tonight. It would be nice. Oh, who knows? Perhaps the angels are looking after me. And there was also another thing spotted, a kamikaze duck. <laughs> I never spotted the, either of these things. It was pointed out to me by viewers, but take a look at this. Very clever duck. Have a look in the right-hand side, right on the end of the pontoon, and you'll see a duck hanging upside down from the pontoon. Clever guy. Take a look. Yes, very clever. I never spotted either of them. Right, I'm going to get back now, drop these off with Ian, take all their stuff around and get sorted, and then the hospital. So I've dropped the, the boys off with Ian. I'm just coming back now to sort chugs out. Um, what would you do without the help of these boaters? And of course in um, and a, medic, a medical emergency, which this, I think, is classed as. Um, I'm allowed to slightly expand my support bubble. Well, to be honest, if I'm allowed or not, I am, because I have to get to hospital. Um, we'll take all the precautions we can and do everything above board. But I've got a feeling it'll just be laser and then I'll be told to rest. And that is the best case scenario, because trust me, I... I'm so used to this. I've had so much eye treatment and uh, I think my eyes have had more laser than the Starship Enterprise, to be honest. 
Here we go. We could see some as well back into the Pennines into the morning, making for some pretty icy conditions. Temperatures at the lowest again with highly potential I've been waiting now at A&E for five and a half hours, just a little over, and I was starting to feel weak with my diabetes. I do bring mints and things with me. I had some Kendall mint cake. I had that, but I ran out, and I've been chasing and chasing and chasing. So in the end, they have got me a tuna sandwich, so I'm going to eat this. I've still not been seen, so I've got to go and sit back in the waiting room when I've had my tuna sandwich. I wouldn't have bothered. I just wouldn't have bothered. Well, that's it. 25 to 6 at night. Seven hours later, I have just got out now. And I can honestly say that was a waste of time. I don't normally criticise the NHS. I knew I'd had a haemorrhage. I knew I needed uh, a laser treatment. So you have to report here in the UK to A&E if you don't have an appointment at the certain uh, department, which I did. And I sat there and I saw the triage nurse within half an hour of arriving here at 25 to 11 this morning. So it was about just after 11, I think, when I, when I actually saw the triage nurse. The triage nurse says, right, OK, took all the details down. I'll get a doctor to, to, to see you. Well, as you saw, I was waiting and waiting and waiting until in the end, I had to keep complaining and asking what's going on. They did bring me a sandwich so I could get a sandwich. Anyway, eventually I saw this uh, young doctor, a young lady. She couldn't turn the machine on. She asked me where the switch was so she could turn the machine on so she could look at the back of my eye. Anyway, a few of them looked and they couldn't turn the machine on. And then she got a little eye scope thing, you know, a little handheld thing and had a look. And she looked at the back of my eye and said, Oh yeah, you've got a bit of blood there. It looks a bit red. So um, she said, uh, it looks like you've had a hemorrhage. You may need laser. She said, I'll phone the, um, the eye department for you. So she phoned the eye department and it was too late. All the consultants are going home, so nobody wanted to see me or nobody could see me. Um, so they're going to phone me back tomorrow morning uh, about 9 o'clock with another appointment. So it'll be another trip uh, all the way back. Uh, hopefully it'll be tomorrow, but it's getting back here, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. They're just waiting now for uh, for Amy to pick me up. Be about another 40 minutes or so, something like that. Very big thanks to Steve or Amy Joe for bringing me though. Cheers, Steve. Short notice, thank you. Oh, just a shame. It's a complete waste of time. Complete waste of time. Well, that's it. Back on chugs now. Uh, a very, very, very stressful day. A very horrible day. I didn't like it at all and in fact my eye is actually aching for the first time today. Um, back on chugs now, the boys are, well, Chip's watching the telly, I think Dale's sitting on the bed. Uh, but uh, it was a, a horrible, horrible day. So we'll wait and see if they phone me at nine o'clock in the morning like they promised for the next appointment. I did have one nice thing happen though, I was waiting in the waiting room and I heard of a gentleman, Crispin, and he'd like to say happy birthday to his mum, Linda. Linda Robinson, many happy returns, my love. This will be a bit of a shock for you. No doubt there's a picture of you there in Whitby, which I know is a very special place for you both. Um, and I know, uh, unfortunately, your son's been a little bit poorly, so he hasn't been able to see you. But he'd like to wish you a very, very happy 70th birthday. So happy birthday, Linda. I hope you had a great day, which was today. But by the time you see this, 
it would have been a couple of days ago, but never mind. It's a uh, happy birthday to you anyway. And a very, very special thanks to Steve uh, for with no, um, no timing whatsoever or no preparation. He took me to the hospital. So thank you very, very much, Steve. That's Steve off Amy Joe, of course. Thank you very much indeed. A big thanks to Amy as well for picking me up and getting me back. Thank you, darling. I do appreciate it. And of course, a huge thanks to Ian on Morning Star from Narrowboat Tales for looking after my boys. Chip and Dale were lovely and warm and they were walked and spoiled uh, by Ian all day. So thank you very much, Ian. And no doubt you'll be doing it again, mate, because I've got to go back again. Uh, but anyway, well, <laughs> I just watched good old Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, doing his speech um, about the COVID and we're in, we're in full lockdown again. Um, not that any of us had any doubt about that, but he had a bit of a look of Winston Churchill about in there doing that speech. It's the thing to do. Uh, I think we all know it's the thing to do. Um, whatever we think, we can't change it. We all have our own opinions. And sometimes opinions are better kept to themselves. But uh, yeah, here we go again. We'll be fine. Not a lot of change for us on the boats, to be honest with you. But um Oh, let's just pray these vaccines do something. Uh, yeah, it's Tuesday now, um, the 5th, I think. I'm not feeling good at all. Uh, not looking for sympathy. I'm <laughs> not looking for any of that. This is my diary. This is how I do it. Um, I've got a headache up the side of my head. The NHS have come through, as I knew they would. Um, I have an appointment this morning at 20 to 12. I've normally walked the boys and everything by now. Um, it's about, well, I've got about an hour before I'm leaving. Um, yeah, not feeling it at all this morning. Not at all, I'm feeling it. <laughs> uh, I know what's coming. I'll get a swill and I'll go and get sorted because I know I've got to get it sorted. I've got the boys, so I've got to get it sorted. One of them, innit? Yeah, in, in, uh... In normal life, it was always me that did the running around and it was always me that took people and me that did things. I hate relying on, on other people. I don't like it. And it's not nice not having that hand to hold when you've got all this on your plate. I've never been so late getting ready and I hate filming things like this. But this is my diary. This is my life and this is how I do these vlogs. Even though I hate filming things like this, um, people will think, oh, there he is again. <laughs> Looking for sympathy with the sorry vote. I'm not, folks. I'm really, really not. Um, come on, boys. This is me. This is my life. And I'd much rather be filming me with a smiley face, moving chugs through the British waterways. That's what I like doing. Filming me being miserable, down. Uh, isn't what I want to be filming, trust me. But it's my diary, and that's life. It's full of ups and downs. Listen to him. He's like a little pig. What's you making that noise for, Chipster Whipster? <laughs> you a piggy? You, you, you. He's a nutter, isn't he? You. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, the people that know me um, know I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not that type of fella whatsoever. Um, I'm not one for the, the sympathy vote or lying in bed feeling ill and sorry for myself or anything. I do sort of pick myself up. operations on my eye, I firstly try to get out of bed straight after the operation. <laughs> Uh, and get home. I wanted to be picked up and go home. Uh, I'm not one for the sympathy vote. I don't want or neither need it. But it is nice to have someone to hug or hold a hand or just get a bit of comfort off. That's nice. And I miss that. Come on. I know it's cold. would, as a rule, have their coats on this morning, but they're in the wash, unfortunately. They don't last long when the weather's like this. 
So a nice quick walk, get them back in the warm. Uh, yeah, so Ian's having the boys again today and Steve's taking me to hospital. Um, Malcolm's offered to take me as well, of course. He phoned me earlier. He's worried, bless him. I know they're there and, and that's good. Steve just dropped me off here we go again if you look back to my first vlog ever you'll see this door on it the door but now it's made staff only because of Covid <laughs> staff only now that's Steve we've got to go to the main entrance oh, <laughs> as luck would have it we've actually found a parking space right by the main entrance the main entrance is there uh, Steve needs the gents, and we're not in a lock. <laughs> he normally just wants to go for a wee in the lock. So uh, he's he's following me in as I, I know my way around this hospital quite well now. So uh, here we go again. Well, it's a walk I've done many times. But it's difficult this morning. chairs everywhere in here and it's heaving. I am actually the only person in here today. So yes, as predicted, I have had a hemorrhage. And yes, I do need laser, but uh, unfortunately they can't do it today. So I'm waiting for another appointment. It could be in about four to six weeks. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't do anything today because there's too much blood in my eye. And simply, they can't see to, to see where to laser. So uh, that's where we are. Back to the car and back to Chuck's. Back on chugs now, so uh, all I've been told to do is don't lift anything heavy, rest and don't get stressed. Um, and that's all I can do at the moment. Obviously if it gets any worse or anything else happens, it's uh, to contact the hospital. So I've got to wait for my next appointment. But again, big, big thanks to Steve uh, for taking me and a huge thanks for Ian um, for looking after the boys. Um, it's nice knowing that they're safe that's the main thing so uh, i'm going to do exactly what the doctor recommended now i think i'll have a piece of toast and uh, just put my feet up and sit back <laughs> 